Hey, wanted to get you a little video. We are working on some off-leash obedience at the park with Miss Molly. Kind of give you a little bit of an update on her. So she's she's doing really good. So I think she's ready to come home for some time. Um, I want her to mature a little bit more before she comes back and we really start to hone in on some of this task work stuff that we're going to be asking her to do. Um, and really just kind of using this time to advance her obedience with you guys. I am going to spend um, some time with you guys in private sessions between now and the next time she comes back. But especially this coming Friday when I bring her home, I want to spend a good amount of time showing you guys what I want to do with the attend. So I'm going to bring her a little bit hungry and we can work it together so with, with her food as well as we can maybe go to a park or something work on some obedience so what I what I see from her she's going to be completely different than Murphy and so I want to kind of you know tell you what I see and so you can kind of get a little bit more prepared so so she's more of a silly personality she's pretty happy-go-lucky when it comes to people and it's not that Murphy can't be silly but Murphy is a little bit more serious and so impulse control just comes a little bit more natural to him than it does to her and so who knows how much of that is puppy how much of that is you know she's going to grow out of um, there's definitely things that we can do to work on training, but, but that training is going to be really important that she understands these stay commands, like placing down stays. She's a little bit sneaky. Um, I've seen her kind of want to wander off on the place bed and go see what the kids are doing or <laughs> go see if some food dropped on the table. And so there's some, there's going to be a lot more supervision on her. Um, and especially because of her age, you know, she's doing really well for the age that she's at and she's probably more advanced than most dogs her age, but we want to make sure that she's, um, not like learning when your back is turned because I can definitely see that behavior from, from her. She's a little bit more sneaky, um, struggles more with impulse control. So some exciting things. And so we've been really working on bringing the excitement and then working on downstays and place command and recall and healing and all those stuff around really exciting stuff like dogs and people and you know so she things that she loves um even some things that maybe make her a little bit uneasy sometimes we'll go for a walk and dogs will be barking behind a fence and it makes her a little bit uncomfortable like most dogs it makes most dogs uncomfortable and so we'll work on impulse control in those situations too um and then just of course adding depth and generalizing behaviors by doing the same stuff but in a new location so she's going to train differently than murphy but the training itself will look similar um when we start to introduce her more for task work i think it might be helpful to maybe to tweak it a little bit just based on her size um so i'm going to send her home and give you guys some stuff to do to, to work on the attend when i when bring her back we'll, we'll add the lap but as far as like her sending to a kid um, I'm probably going to add a down eventually where she goes and she lays down in front of the, the kids and that might be helpful for smaller framed children, um, you know, younger kids, kids that maybe are more timid, intimidated by the situation, maybe need a softer energy, um, whereas I don't want her to be like bouncing over to the kid and then like that make it worse, you know. So, and then of course we've added a recall with the attend, so if she's too much and she's in the way, we can call her back. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I want to, I want to work on just kind of getting you used to working her because she's totally different than Murphy. So it will be a learning experience for both of us as we're introducing her into a very similar job that Murphy does. Um, but with a completely different dog, despite coming from similar genetics. So, um, she is very much like a golden retriever brain, whereas Murphy takes more after the poodle. Um, total poodle brain. She is total golden. So sometimes we always joke that training goldens, it's like they sometimes have groundhog day moments where you feel like you've <laughs> taught them the same thing for the past three days in a row. And it's not that they're not, they're not smart or anything like that. Goldens are smart. She's smart. She just is also very excitable and kind of does what she wants to do sometimes. So, um, yeah, so it's somebody I know. Um, so yeah, so I want to kind of show you how to combat that and work through that stuff. Um, and a lot of it's just getting into leash time with her. Um, I know you guys are busy and so it doesn't take a ton of time throughout the day, but you know, just making sure that 
you have a very structured once a day, twice to two, two, two excuse me, to two times a day structured uh, training session. So this is her third one of the day. Um, I, of course, I'm going to do more because she's kind of in this learning phase. But, you know, when she comes back to you, I want to make sure that she's, you're honing in on some of this stuff. Okay, Molly. Okay. She's working on some impulse control. Holding down stays a little bit longer. Um, then we're just going to go into the heel. So I, I want to make sure we're healing over grass. It's hot. Being on the sidewalk is not ideal at, you know, one o'clock in the afternoon. And so, um, but training on grass gives us lots of opportunities to work on distractions that we don't really work on in the sidewalk. So it's common, especially on new grass surfaces for them to want to drop their nose and sniff, see what other critters have been on the grass and what other people have, you know, played soccer here and all those kinds of things. But when we're working on the heel, I want to make sure that focus is on me, not on your environment. So it doesn't mean that you can't look at where you walk and acknowledge things in your environment, but you need to be maintaining focus on me enough that when I go this way, you're really trying to hone in. So she drops her nose heel, doing a little bit of e-collar there. She kind of, good girl, always sniffed the, the ground versus staying with me. So I'm gonna do some testing of that. Some other stuff I've been working on is just really proofing the down. So my body language right now is we're, we're walking, we're moving, we're, we're in heel. Um, then I'll, I'm gonna kind of throw a curveball at her and ask her to down, but my body language is going to continue to walk. So that's what we call it down in motion. Molly, down. Good. I'm, <laughs> I'm impressed. That has been very difficult for her. Oh, my camera, there we go, got blurry. Um, that has been very difficult. So we first start where I just kind of walk in place, and we did that over and over and over again this morning and yesterday. So. She did really good with that. She does good when she sees people walking by. She, yeah, she's totally different where Murphy is kind of a little bit, you know, he gets kind of spooky. Like, what is that person doing over there? You know, cause he just overthinks it all. <laughs> Whereas she's just like, ah, I don't care. But when they come up and they bring a lot of excitable energy, she struggles in a different way than he does. And so um, we'll kind of work through some of those, those things um, together. And I want to kind of show you how to prepare for those those things with her so good girl yeah that's just what we want from her we want hey there's a person over there but there's not like this like crazy amount of like stiff body language she looks back at us she's just as aware that somebody's there um with some dogs like murphy that kind of get a little bit spooked we could say leave it if they came closer and they weren't engaging with us but she was going to go try to engage with them i could say leave it there so we could we could do stuff like that good job molly okay good she's like i'm getting so tired it's hot but um yeah so she's gonna she's gonna kind of push in different ways but it's always gonna come from more of an excitability mindset with her um and so that even could just be like the presence of having her here is excitable and so sometimes that's hard when dogs are like oh my owner's here and then they're like not listening and you're like why are you listening you know how to do this stuff it's because she's in an excitable state of mind and so um with both you guys i think it would be good to get in some leash time once a day even if it's just like 10 minutes um you both work you both you know busy your parents you got lots of stuff going on in your lives but if you could just get in like 10 minutes of leash time with her she's going to be less pushy on boundaries in the long in the long run molly down um and I think that's going to be ideal, even though it's not, you know, in the office yet, it's going to help her in the office just generalize a lot of that behavior. So this is, yeah, a great park. We've, we've had a couple dogs walk past, but everyone's getting ready to go back to school. Not as many people out in the park, but anyway, okay, we'll, we'll work more and touch base as we get closer to Friday, but, um, yeah, I'm really ex excited to bring her home and show you guys her progress and talk about the progression um, that we will continue on with her because she's not done. We still got more work to do, but the foundation is there. So now we can build upon it. Good job, girl.